Hello and welcome to our recording of the Christian Meditation Prayer Group of St. Mary's Church in Kalani. Thank you for joining us. If you have need of a refresher, a reminder of the technique of our Christian meditation in the John Main tradition, then please press the pause button on this video and go to the commentary section uh, beneath the video on the YouTube page uh, to remind yourself of the technique. Um, when you're comfortable that you're familiar with it, then come back and press the play button again. So we begin our meditation, we close our eyes, we take a relaxed position in our chair with a straight back on our feet squarely on the floor and relax the body. And then at the sound of the gong, having closed our eyes, we then bring in the mantra, the sacred word, Maranatha.
So to end our session today, uh, we have some thoughts and reflections on the practice of meditation. One of the things that psychology tells us is that the growth of our personalities, of which our ego is a considerable part, uh, is formulated in our younger days, when we are adolescents, when we're growing up. And our life experiences of those times uh, is uh, profoundly influential in the way in which we conduct ourselves as adults. One of the aspects of this uh, profound insight is that it gives us a clue as to the way in which the, the um, struggle, the, dare one say, the battle that goes on inside the mind as we practice our meditation each day. The battle, the, the uh, conflict which is going on inside our minds is down to the fact that the ego, uh, our will, our conscious thoughts, are clamoring for our attention whilst our desire is to forward our experience of the Divine Presence with the use of the mantra to cause our mind to be filled with something that is not anything to do with us or anything to do with our will, that is the purpose of the sacred word, the mantra, uh, we find that regularly our uh, uh, thoughts come into our minds, uh, memories and feelings and experiences well up inside us. And this constant to and fro is part of our experience of our meditation practice. So what actually is happening here? Why is it that we are constantly sidetracked by these spurious, uh, inconsequential thoughts or sometimes even uh, thoughts of great fear or panic or concern or the desire to resolve some difficulty? The conflict is caused by the way in which the ego has been formed. The psychologists tell us that the, the essential part of our ego, the desire that is coming from deep within us, is the desire to control our environment. Uh, and the control of our environment is necessary for us to feel safe, for us to feel secure, for us to feel that we are not vulnerable. It's the purpose of our ego to help secure our life so that we may live in safety. Of course the Bible tells us that our safety lies in God. So there is a conflict here. Where does our safety, where does our help come from? As the psalmist says, uh, it comes from the hills. No, it comes from the Lord. That's to whom we look for our safety. But the ego wasn't educated to understand that. So what is going on? If we have had 
uh, children around about us, especially young children, uh, during this lockdown period, we will know full well where this is coming from, because we will have seen it. Uh, if we haven't had young people, children around about us in the past few weeks, maybe uh, our grandchildren will alert us to this because we will have observed it in them. It is the natural instinct of a child to want attention. The attention is desired because the child needs that assurance that it is part of a community, it has relationships and that they can call upon those relationships. Of course the child thinks that it can call upon those relationships at will, <laughs> whenever it wants them. So if you are working at home uh, for your job and you don't normally do home working and uh, you have small children around, then you will have experienced regularly the child bursting into your office, your study, and clamouring for your attention. You may have been on a Zoom conference meeting or on the phone or deeply engaged with some uh, problem on your computer, trying to write a letter or sort out some uh, computation of uh, finance or whatever it might be. You will have been engaged and the child comes running in and says, Mummy, 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 or Daddy, 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 and says, I need your attention right now. And of course, as the adult, as the uh, worker in this equation, we are fully engaged in trying our own way of drawing attention to ourselves by the use of our work, our employment, the task in hand. So there is necessarily a conflict that has arisen instantaneously. And this conflict uh, is part of our daily experience and in our meditation it is very, very much to the fore. It is part of our regular experience. The ego never lost that practice of clamouring for attention when it wanted it. The moment it wanted that attention, it demands it. So, in the same way, during our practice of meditation, what we find is the ego clamours for our attention just as much as a little child does of its parent or its grandparent or somebody else who's in the vicinity. It clamours for that attention, it calls attention towards it and it very readily succeeds because of the nature of that attention grabbing technique. So in our experience of our meditation what we find is that this clamouring for our attention is going on at the deeper level. It brings us back out of that deep presence of the Holy Spirit which the mantra, mantra the sacred word has taken us to in our meditation. It brings us out and it diverts our attention towards it. Which of course is clearly in our understanding of the nature of the ego a self satisfying, a selfish, a self-centred dynamic. The ego clamours for the attention, it draws us out and we are distracted. And so that is why it is necessary and important that we notice that that has happened rather than being caught up in it, that we notice. Of course when the little child clamours for the attention of the parent the, it notices it straight away. It, it intrudes instantly. But with our ego, we will have been deep within for a moment or so in the Divine Presence. And this clamouring of attention will be drawing us out through our subconscious into our consciousness. So it takes a little moment or two for us readily to be conscious that the thoughts have taken over that the thoughts are in our mind. And that clarity of awareness is what then brings us to the knowledge that we should revert to the mantra. So what we're doing then is battling against, is uh, contending with this learned technique, this learned 
capacity. Our ego has for many, many years been very efficient at doing is calling our attention towards it so that it can engage in some uh, some technique, some, some thought processes, some reasoning, some intellectual, intellectual engagement. Uh, it can resolve a problem so that it may feel that it is in control again because that is where its safety lies. But we know from the scriptures that our true safety lies in the spiritual realm. It lies with God. And that is what our mantra, our meditation practice is attempting to teach us. That we divert from the practice of the ego, which is the momentary attention and the safety of the present moment, and the illusion that we can be in control. That can be, that can be the master, master or the mistress of our, of our moment, of the pressure that is brought to bear by the world around us. The mantra, the sacred word, and our meditation practice is giving the lie to this illusion. And it is helping us to learn, to experience, and at the deeper level, to trust that our help comes from the Lord and that we may be secure in the Lord every moment of every second of every minute, of every hour, of every day, of every week, of every year, dare I say of every decade, of every century, however long we live, that is the true nature of our being and that is the true source of our safety and of our peace. So eventually in our meditation practice we begin to gain that mastery over the call of the ego for our attention, it begins to realize that when it clamors for us, it will not get our attention unless we choose to give it. And we may choose, it's perfectly reasonable to choose to give the ego our attention, but only on terms that are influenced by the peace that God gives to us and not on its own terms. We choose when we pay attention to our ego. We don't fall into the trap of it demanding and we rolling over and acquiescing. So I encourage you in your meditation practice and I encourage you in your journey of the soul that you may come to that place where you are trusting in God and your ego is no longer trying its best to distract you. God bless you and keep you safe. Amen.